The film's called uh, Glass, a portrait of Philip in 12 parts. And, um, you know, obviously that sort of relates to Philip's music and, and so on, but it, it is actually structured in 12 chapters, uh, and each one uh, explores a certain facet of his life and work, what he was doing during the period that I was following him around. Um, and each one is a kind of portal, in a way, into a whole area of his life, um, be it to do with his history or, you know, elements of his life that, uh, you know, famous uh, performances and episodes and all sorts of things. So, but the whole story is driven through the, the present-day experience of actually being with Philip and following him through a whole sort of cycle of his work over a, about a, a year or 18 months. I got to know Philip through, um, I, when I was editing Snow Falling on Cedars, a movie I made in 1997, um, I used as a temp track uh, some Philip Glass music, you know, like I'm sure just about every filmmaker on the planet has done. And we got so sort of wedded to the idea of this music that I thought I'd better get in contact to see whether we could license it if we needed to. And um, so I made contact with his management and publishing company. And they realized that I was a sort of Philip Glass fan. And they really brokered a sort of relationship between us in the sense of said, oh, you should meet Philip, you know, have lunch with him, talk to him. And we just got to know each other. And we got on, we got on well, you know. This documentary about Philip Glass really started about two years ago when um, Philip's management came to me and said, uh, had I ever thought about making a documentary about Philip? I'd known Philip for about 10 years. And um, they said, you know, he turns 70 in 2007, and is that an idea that would interest you? And I said, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, I'm a huge fan. I have been for a long time. And I knew him, not, you know, not closely, but I knew him quite well. Um, and I just thought it could make something really exceptional if I could capture the kind of person Philip is in everyday life. The style of the documentary is basically a very intimate look behind the curtain into the life of a, you know, an exceptional artist and a, an exceptional man. Um, and I, I shot it myself on, a, on, a, on an HDV camera, which at first was just because I didn't have a budget to make the film with, so I thought I'll do this just to sort of keep going until I can afford to pay a real camera person to work with me. And, but what that did was it created a tremendous intimacy. And I began to realize that that was the film that, that I was doing, and that it was better to just keep pushing forward in that way, uh, rather than bringing in all the inhibiting elements of crew and lights and all the stuff that goes with that. I was with him very frequently because, I mean, I, I shot about 120 hours, so I guess, the camera was rolling for that, that, that long. Tell me about how you use music in the film. Well, I tried to make selections that would uh, resonate with the sorts of, you know, things that were happening in the scenes. Um, in other words, when we're exploring Philip's spiritual search, which is something that's occupied him for over 50 years, um, and taken him through many different kinds of cultures and different kinds of philosophies, be it Buddhist, be it Hindu, be it, you know, Toltec, whatever it might be, Taoism. Um, you know, I used music from, from Passages, which is a, a collaboration that he did with Ravi Shankar. And, uh, um, or when we see him at Tibet House, for example, we use music which Philip wrote as a, a sort of a, a welcome to the Dalai Lama at a particular concert that he was, uh, he was, he was a, a part of. So everywhere it was just trying to find elements of music that would have some connection to the kind of, you know, the kind of scene that, that we were depicting. His music embraces every facet of the musical spectrum, from commercials through pop to, you know, high art, if you like, in the form of opera and, and his symphonies, and of course his music scores. He's done dozens of music schools. He was doing five of them while I was filming him, including my own. I think, I think he's a very surprising man. I think, you know, uh, uh, there are many facets to his character. And, um, you know, it's a delightful process to sort of, to, to get a glimpse of that, if you like. So during one scene, he's, he's creating pizza from, from scratch, you know, um, kneading the dough. And, and at the same time, he's having a conversation with me off camera about the new symphony that he's writing. 
I would have loved to have watched um, Johann Sebastian Bach making pasta while talking about a cantata, for example. Well, maybe for future generations this will be that opportunity.